All right, well, welcome to the Sports Guys, another episode. Really happy you're here tonight, and uh, we're really happy to welcome Brad Moore. How are you doing, Brad? Good, good, Tom. How are you? Really glad you're here. We had a yeah, great thanks episode. thanks for having me. Had a great episode with your son about a month ago where we were talking about a very similar topic, so we're excited to build on top of that with you. How are yep. you doing, Robbie? Thanks for having me. Doing great. Everything's good. Awesome, man. All right, let's roll. Take a look. Well, let's talk a little bit about conference realignment. This is just a mess, too. It's not just the money side of things, but it's also, you know, where are the team's going to be, where are they going to settle. They're all trying to find better TV deals. They're trying to find better conferences. You know, I'm concerned about are all of the uh, rivalries going to go away? I mean, a lot of them have already gone away, all the rivalry games we used to love when we were growing up. But uh, this is what the new ACC looks like uh, in 2024. They've added Cal. Stanford and SMU. So now the SEC has 17 schools heading into the season with Notre Dame still having a five game arrangement with the conference. Um, they added three teams and added all three teams to their television deal, which runs through 2036 with ESPN. And I think that's the major concern that Florida State, Clemson, Miami, North Carolina have with the current deal is that you're talking about another 12 years under the $35 million per school arrangement with ESPN, which doesn't even come close to what the bigger conferences get. What, what are you guys' thoughts about uh, the ACC, the shuffling? You know, can this conference stay together? Yeah, I, yeah, I think the ACC is going to survive. I think there's some theater schools that uh, that could potentially come up from, from one of the – from one of the G five uh, conferences into the ACC, there's several that are that are obviously at that caliber that can come in there. Um, you know, I think these these uh, you know I think Florida State has has a lot of uh, issues with the ACC outside of just the the, the monetary issue, um, right. and. Uh, you know, I, I I I I'm a little concerned. Does 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 the SEC want Florida State? I mean, where 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 would they go? Would they go to the Big Ten? Um, you, you know, Good question. I, you know, same thing with Clemson. Are they going to pull? You know, you got South Carolina in the SEC. Are they going to pull a Clemson in? I, I'm I'm not sure that, that the SEC question. and everybody's kind of wanting to. Seems like they're wanting to get in the SEC. Uh, but is is that does the SEC want them? I don't know the answer. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, just to give you an idea, you have $35 million to each school from ESPN for the ACC. You have $78 million for the SEC schools. So it's it's just in a total different ballpark. Um, and you know, part of the reason why they're so much more competitive financially. So, so is, a, is, is a Vanderbilt getting $78 million? That's my understanding. Is wow. that they get seventy eight million? That's just from the you know for the SEC TV deal. That doesn't even include what they get from the NCAA, which is right, another right. tranche. Florida State and Clemson have sued the ACC in federal court for rights to leave the conference. Um, the current grant of rights for the ACC forces any school who wants to leave to pay a hundred and twenty million dollar exit fee. So it's pretty prohibitive for these schools to try to leave and, and pay the hundred and twenty million dollar fee. Um, and then North Carolina and Miami have both stated they're interested in exploring it. So I think both of them are waiting to see what happens with Florida State and Clemson. But I think of the schools that are the most likely to leave and want to leave, it's probably those four schools want to leave the most. Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, Miami. Yeah. North Carolina is in the worst financial shape of all of them. The main reason why they want to leave is because of that TV deal. So I think exactly. if they were to revisit that TV deal, within the next couple of years, they could settle everything down and make it a lot more um, equitable in comparison to the SEC, maybe a little mm -hmm. bit less, but not nothing that would dramatically want to make uh, members go running for the hills. Um, that's what happened here. There was a massive mistake uh, made that it's not so much that they undervalue the ACC um packages but that they did it for such a long period of time there's no fixing it so they're going to have to revisit that because i think they can't the tv 
deal for ESPN cannot let the conference shatter. It'll lose its product. So I totally agree. They've got to go to ESPN and essentially beg them out of that contract and renegotiate. Yeah. They just yeah, but ESPN to has an incentive to fix it because otherwise you lose the top teams out of that divi- out of that league and it takes away a lot of eyeballs nationally away from what you're trying to sell. So, you know, they're, they're incentivized too. I, I think if you can fix that, you can, you can take a lot of the air out of these uh, ACC squabbles and it can settle down and, and, and kind of. As you get- saw, they're adding, we're adding 51 million on top now for all these schools. So the money's got to get bigger for all, all of them to survive. The question is though, how do you keep this from happening in the future where the ACC comes out with its TV deal and then the SEC comes out a little bit later with a much different one. How do you, how do you make it more equitable so that conferences don't want to swallow up the best teams of the other conference? And yeah, good point. You know, there has to be some negotiations where it's like all the contracts should be done at the same time or something. What do you think, Brad? Do you think that ACC can get ESPN to renegotiate or you think they can, move to another TV network? Uh, <clears throat> one or the other and probably needs to happen. But, you know, I think you have to look at the value of what, uh, from from the network's perspective, mm-hmm. what is the value that that mm-hmm. conference or that specific team brings to them? Because there's got to be a return on their investment too. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. You, you know... Um, out of the four teams we mentioned in the ACC that was possible, possibly looking at exiting the ACC, mm-hmm. I would think North Carolina would be the only one that the SEC would want um, out of those. Uh, but, you know, I think the ACC can go and, and, and what we're all saying is, is go and renegotiate. And maybe you don't get the 78 million that, mm-hmm. that the SEC gets, but maybe you get Split 55 million. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and it kind of settles things down a little bit. Yeah, and, I agree. I agree with that. Yeah. You know, um, I think from the, from the ESPN's perspective, it's better than losing it to another network uh, mm-hmm. because it's going to bring in money to them. But are they going to bring in as much as, you know, an Ohio State or a, an right. Alabama or a Georgia? It's just yeah. – yeah, that's right. You know, and you know, but do you know why ESPN should do that deal? Because they're not going to be able to afford the Big Ten or the SEC anyway. <laughs> ESPN is laying people yeah. off right now, so right. If they, if they want to keep college football, they should stay with the ACC, which is the, which is the third best conference right now. And I think the expansion of these leagues is actually hurting rivalries. Um, no doubt. Yeah. I'm, I'm Virginia, very Virginia against Stanford is not going to create a lot of energy at the water cooler at work you know um yeah, there's not a lot of hatred there so um, do you think do you guys think that they added cal stanford and smu as a defensive move because they see some of these schools that are going to leave and they wanted to make sure they remained a robust conference was it a defensive move or was it was it pity for these guys that got left out of the other conferences or i'm trying to figure out what they were thinking here well the acc is looking at it as revenue yeah, and because none of this makes sense that you've got, you know, you've got Cal playing NC State, you know, or NC State going all the way to California to play one game and coming all the way back. It just, yeah. to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense from that mm-hmm. perspective. From a financial perspective, from the ACC's perspective, that makes great sense, mm-hmm. especially for the TV revenue. So that's right. That's exactly you know, right. But. Uh, it's true. I think a lot of these rivalries are going to get hurt as the conferences get bigger and have less personality. I think you, you end up with games that people don't care that much about. So it becomes a self-fulfilling right. problem right. that, you know, interesting note there, interesting note there at the top, uh, a total of 134 schools are going to compete in the FBS this year with Sam Houston and Jacksonville state joining last year. And then Kennesaw state joining this year. So, FBS is still expanding, still growing. And so you're going to have 134 schools that need to feed at the trough, so to speak. So, you know, is there going to be enough money to go around as these schools' budgets continue to increase and inflate? What do you guys think? 
Yeah, I uh, um, I had a thought here. I wanted to go back. You can put this on the bloop. To the yeah, sure. Blooper, yeah. but do it. You know, in the NCAA, um, I think if they look at the NFL's model with conferences mm -hmm. and and how that plays out, I'm not quite sure that this conference realignment may not end up going that way. Um, you still have division rivalries in the NFL. And so uh, I think I think to Rob's point, I think if we continue down this path that they're going now jumping from conference to conference, those rivalries are going to go away. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you if you look at what the NFL has done with divisions, um, you know, and, and I think you still can have the rivalries in those divisions. I hope so. I don't I, know. The, that, the that's rivalry further down the road, but I think no that uh, you and Rob make really good points. The rivalries are one of the things I'm the most distressed about. You know, to think about, you know, Cal doesn't play Stanford anymore, and Cal doesn't play USC anymore, and you know, USC Notre Dame is coming to an end this year. And you know, is Duke Duke North Carolina still going to play? Is is North Carolina NC State going to still play? Yeah, if Carolina yeah. goes to the SEC, NC State Carolina's. Yeah, Not Virginia, Virginia Tech. I mean, if you have if you have Virginia Tech go to one conference and Virginia go to the other, I mean, that's like the number one game we look forward to every year, right? So, I mean, what's our favorite weekend every year? It's rival weekend, you know. It's no it's uh, what right. what a great weekend of football. You know what I will say though is I think this realignment shows a commitment to being good in all all sports, um, because a lot of these teams like Stanford have a very diverse athletic program. Mm -hmm. They're good in track and swimming and a lot of it's secondary true. sports. They're it's not that good in football anymore. Yeah. This is almost like admitting we're not a number one football conference, but we're good at everything else. So what other teams are like that? These teams, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's right. uh, to You're an right. extent. It's like saying yeah, we're good at football. We're not great, but we're good in everything else. We're kind of great in everything else. Baseball, yeah, right. men swimming, women swimming. That's a really good point. Well, this is a slide I prepared to surprise you guys. Uh, this is an article I found by 247 Sports, Brad Crawford, who essentially um, talked to various sources within the ACC and sports-affiliated team site experts and published his predictions for where he sees all the ACC programs landing if the conference dissolves or implodes. And these are his projections. He sees the Clemson in the SEC. Uh, he didn't have an opinion on Duke. He sees Florida State in the Big Ten. So, Brad, that's what you mentioned, Florida State in the Big Ten, so they can get a Florida footprint. Um, Miami in the Big 12, along with NC State in the Big 12. Um, North Carolina going to the SEC, since uh, SEC doesn't have a North Carolina footprint. Notre Dame staying independent. Virginia going to the Big Ten. And then Virginia Tech, he didn't have an opinion on. So, what are you guys' thoughts about Brad Crawford's, uh, you know, slotting of these teams in different conferences. I don't. I I, I have a problem with Clemson going to the SEC. I, 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 not with Clemson going to the SEC, but I can't see the SEC bringing them in. Um, with already having South Carolina there, of course, you've got Auburn and Alabama. So, um, mm -hmm. you know what would happen to Louisville or are these just the ACC teams? He, he these made? are the only ones he projected. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, NC state, big 12. I, I could probably see NC state in the big 10. Um, that's some interesting speculation there. I, you I, know, it's I, interesting because big, T I do like his picks of Florida state and Virginia in the big 10, just from the standpoint, they want to add those two States. Right. 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 And then sec wants to add North Carolina. So that makes sense. Right. Sec in, in North Carolina makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Clemson, Clemson sec one, I don't know about, I, I don't know if South Carolina would really want them to be in the sec. So they might try to vote it down. Um, and then why Miami or NC State would accept the bid to the Big 12, I don't know. But it's an interesting supposition. Robbie, what are your thoughts on these? So my thoughts are that this is not going to happen. Um, I can't see this happening under any circumstance. What I can see is one of two things happening. 
this is what's probably going to happen. Either the top two to four schools go to other conferences, especially SEC, and the rest of the conferences, the rest of the conference consolidating and sort of regrouping and reformulating in such a way that makes sense, and then getting on to an okay path. Um, or I think um, they renegotiate the TV deal and keep everybody home. So mm -hmm. either way, I think the ACC is going to exist, either minus four or two teams or intact with a better TV deal. So I, I don't agree. I don't think any of this is really – I uh, think – I personally think the ACC, ACC is going to exist. It's going to lose two to four teams to either the SEC or Big Ten or both. Um, it's going to survive. It's going to have a renegotiated TV deal. And I think it's going to end up adding one or two more programs, maybe even App State, Brad, or Liberty. You know, Liberty is looking for a home. You have a couple of schools that could make sense. Um, University of Richmond. So, um, you know, I think there'll be a couple of schools that will be stepping up to fill in and make the conference whole. But I do think the conference will end up losing a couple of these top teams, and and but we'll survive. We'll survive and be able to carry on. I think there'll be much less pressure too for those big teams if they are able to negotiate that contract differently. Maybe mm -hmm. shorten it and increase the revenue, and mm -hmm. maybe even top end the revenue to the highest teams get a tiny bit more of a share. There might be some ways they can keep everybody. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I can't see the the ACC imploding. No. Uh, I, I do I do agree, Tom, that I think there's going to be a few schools that that end up exiting and going on. Um, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's Big Ten, Big Twelve, SEC, but I I, I can't see the ACC is pretty strong, and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, outside of of Florida State and Clemson, who are kind of making some waves and, and maybe like Rob said, maybe the uh, uh, maybe the renegotiation of the TV contracts and, and paying them a little more money kind of settles things down for a little bit. You know, if they can do that, if they can pull that ESPN renegotiated contract off, they could save these teams. I think it is possible. Yeah. yeah. I think it's 50, 50 on whether we lose a couple teams or renegotiate and keep everybody. Mm -hmm. That's, That's right. and then there's a tiny percentage of something like this happening, but it's very small. Well, if that ever happened and we added App State, uh, Brad, then Jackson will have played in the SEC and the ACC. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And the Sun Belt. The Sun <laughs> and the Sun Belt. And the Sun Belt. <laughs> and the Sun Belt. Yeah, yeah. So SEC, this is the new SEC. SEC will have 16 teams in 2024. Of course, Oklahoma, Texas will have their first full seasons in the SEC. Um, they're not – they actually stated uh, about a month ago that they are not looking to expand for the next couple of years. I thought that was really interesting that in May they put out a specific statement that they are not looking to expand, essentially trying to quell the rumors that they're after, you know, Florida State or some of these other teams. Oh, and I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if they're doing that because they're trying to not get sued by the ACC. I wonder if that, that's why they put that statement out. But essentially, they're saying we're we're good at 16. Uh, they have TV deals with SEC Network, the CBS, and Fox. So they have three different deals most lucrative in sports. Um, what are you guys' thoughts about uh, Oklahoma, Texas, and kind of the 16 teams they've got? I, 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 like, the, I like the way the SEC has, has, has put together their teams um, and the teams that they brought in, uh, Texas and Oklahoma. I, I'm not quite sure if that – Two year hiatus is is to, you know, keep the wolves from the ACC off of them, or if they're truly happy with this. Uh, I think Florida is probably going to pressure them a lot to not bring in Florida State or even Miami for that case. Uh, same thing with South Carolina and Clemson. Don't, I, I, and, don't, I, and don't you think they don't want to be accused of tampering? I mean, sure, I think that's absolutely. That statement out. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Also, I think on a certain level, I think a lot of these teams say we just brought in two powerhouse teams, right? big programs. 
all this NIL question marks, let's just take a deep breath and work our way through pay to play NIL questions, mm -hmm. not upset any apple carts, just let's go with this. We added two incredible brands to an amazing conference. Mm -hmm. I think that's good enough for a few years. And then let's see what our problems are two years from now. Look at the TV deal, the way it's sitting, look mm -hmm. at um, revenue, uh, all the, all the factors of some of the stuff we've discussed earlier. And, and then let's regroup and because Carolina's not going anywhere. They're one of the top brands in the country, if not number one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I do think Clemson and Florida State would fit with them in a lot of ways. Even if there's internal politics and pressures to not bring them in, there would be a lot of reasons to bring them in uh, branding wise. But I think I think they feel like they've bitten off enough and just they need to chew, you know? Yeah. That's just kind of you know, the one thing I'd say here, Brad, is they can really call themselves the Southeastern Conference. <laughs> I look at all these teams and they're still in the Southeast. Correct. I mean, even Correct. Oklahoma, Texas, I mean, it's a little marginal. They're more kind of South Central, but, um, you know, they, they, they've they maintained their footprint and they added two states in Oklahoma and Texas that they didn't have before. So they. Yeah, it's funny. We were talking about it earlier today. Tom mm -hmm. and I were talking about the ACC. And I said they should change it to the Athletic Coastal Conference right, right. and make it both coasts, you know, because it, calling it Atlantic Coastal Conference no longer makes any sense. And the next generation is going to say, why is it called that? You know, like they, they're not going to understand and rightly so. Um, but if you change it to Athletic Coastal Conference, you keep the ACC logo, you keep a lot of the branding and you just change the first name and then you can still make it make sense, you know, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's true well, the, the sec has done a good job when you look at the the teams the 16 teams that they have in mm -hmm. there <clears throat> there is no real outliers you know when you look at at the acc there wasn't any outliers until you bring in smu and cal mm -hmm. and and, yeah. and so um you, you know that this 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 mix of teams really really looks well it looks good on yeah. paper yeah vanderbilt's the only one that's a little strange in football it I mean, is they've been in the sec for how long now i know yeah you i know, know. so mm -hmm. i i, so I think they're there to stay the <laughs> and actually vanderbilt balances the sec out because they're good in a lot of other sports that are not yeah. football so they, they they're amazing in basketball and uh yeah. in baseball yeah yeah so would you guys agree sec is the model conference I mean, I, I don't think there's any doubt about it. A hundred percent. Yeah, 100%. in football, yeah. In yeah. football, yes. And yeah. and apparently baseball, they have they have That's the right. final final right. team, four out of the last eight, and the final two teams for the second year in a row mm -hmm. or something like that. I was proud of ACC though; they had a good baseball year this year. Yeah, for sure. So looking but, at the – No lacrosse anywhere to be found. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, look, <laughs> so looking at the uh, Big 12 conference, um, Big 12 will have 16 schools also in 2024. They had 10 schools in 2022, and they've added six schools since. So six schools in the last two years. They added BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF for 2023. They lost Oklahoma and Texas, and then they've added – Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah for 2024. So, I mean, I don't know if any conference has had the kind of in and out <laughs> that this conference has had. It's really kind of Who's the best team in that, in that league? It's really kind of mind-boggling what they've been through. Who, who's the number one football team? Um, Houston, maybe? No. TCU or Texas Tech? TCU. Texas, Texas Tech? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say TCU. Yeah, yeah. Arizona's pretty good. Uh, Oklahoma State's decent. Kansas it's State's pretty decent. Weak, though. It's pretty weak. Mm. Yeah, Utah's decent. Yeah, yeah Utah. It is, they, yeah. It is I mean, a little I think, bit. I think they have a lot of a lot of okay teams. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which 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 brings it down to they have a moderate TV deal, so that kind of makes sense. Yeah. That yeah, they have a moderate TV deal with ESPN and ABC. Their their deal yeah. is a little bit less than the ACC's. It's like two million a year less per team. So uh, interestingly enough, they said the race right now is to be the third best conference. 
So the question is, is the ACC going to be the third best or is the Big 12 going to be third best? And both of them are trying to kind of beef up their power to, uh, to be that kind of third alternative to the Big 10 and the SEC. I think ACC is better than the Big 12. I do too. Yep, yep. Football, basketball, and all other sports. But then it's a big jump to Big Ten and, and, and SEC. <laughs> the question is, is is the Big 12 or the – are the ACC going to get the next big TV deal first? That that's going to tell you a lot on which one's going to be healthy. Well, the ACC is going to have to make a lot of changes to get out of this long-term deal. Mm -hmm. But you can see the uh, Mountain West kind of imploded, and a lot of their teams came to the Big Twelve, mm. and then of course the Pac-12 imploded completely and went all over the place. ACC got some, Big Twelve got some, Big Ten got some. And of course, you have the the two very sad schools that are still left in the Pac-12 that are looking for a home. How are they doing scheduling? I don't even know how that works. Yeah, it's interesting. Every game out of conference. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I look at I look at these guys' footprint, and they're essentially like West Virginia to the West Coast, so they cover most of the country, right? So they're kind of a strange footprint. They. It got. doesn't make sense to me, but. I'm not saying it's yeah. terrible, but I just – it's lacking uh, – uh, Yeah, I mean, they go from Texas all the way up to Cincinnati, Ohio. I mean, Colorado. It's just uh, – it's interesting. It seems mm. like there needs to be more realignment. <laughs> I think so. Let's look at the Big Ten. So Big Ten will have 18 teams, the biggest conference. ACC has 17. Big Ten is 18. Uh, they just added Oregon, UCLA, USC, and Washington. You talk about – they were already a powerhouse conference. Ooh. And they had those four football conferences – or football yeah. teams. My God. And they have deals with the Big Ten Network, ESPN, Fox Sports, CBS, and ABC. They literally have a deal with all five <laughs> to do P wow. Big Ten school uh, games. And so they um, they have incredible money coming in. And as you can see, they've got a really nice lineup of teams. They now stretch from coast to coast. And, I'm pretty uh, sure this, this conference has the most crazy fans. You think so? Yeah. Penn State. 100,000. 100, Michigan, Michigan State. Stadiums. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I think looking at the Big Ten, they they could go neck and neck with, uh, with the SEC. There's no well, doubt. Pretty close. No yeah. I, mean, I think I we'll think see. That, that would beat Vanderbilt. <laughs> You're going to have 12-team uh, playoffs now in, the, in college starting this year going forward. How many of those 12 teams do you think are going to be Big Ten and SEC? <laughs> I mean, realistically. Right. Eight or nine? Eight or nine. Yeah. I mean. Is, is Michigan going to fall off at all? A little. Maybe Not a little. Much. I mean, all these teams are pretty powerhouse. I mean, is Nebraska coming back? Yeah, good question. Maybe, maybe. What do you guys think of the new look Big Ten? It's strong. I like it. It's strong. It is. I mean, what's what? What's a bottom feeder? Northwestern, yeah. Illinois, <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> it it. it uh, I mean, I look at I'm like hey, I look at the four teams they added. Okay, they already were a powerhouse conference already. They already won the top two. They added Oregon. Are you kidding me? They added yeah, Washington. Who, the Washington brand. Washington's been in the Final Four the last two years. <laughs> I don't know USC. I know. Crazy. Those are huge brands. Huge. Big. You know. Yeah. So it, I really do believe there's going to be Big Ten, SEC at the top. You're going to have. ACC Big 12 or the next tier down. Mm -hmm. That's just how it's going to be in football, you know. It's all, all about power. So let's look at the uh, Pac-12 and independents. The independents on the left there. Uh, Brad, you mentioned a couple of these, in, and we were right before the show, and we went live. Um, Notre Dame, UConn, and UMass. So these are the three independents left that are all, uh, in some cases, looking for a home, but in some cases, they kind of like being independent. Uh, Notre Dame's TV deal with NBC is in its final year this year. So heading into 2025, the question is, is, is NBC going to re-up with them, or isn't Notre Dame going to be forced to join a conference and kind of get in line? 
what you guys think? I think they've done a pretty good job at, at managing that internally. Um, and I don't see why they couldn't keep it independent. I, I think Notre Dame likes to likes to that independence. I, I, I don't think they're going to be forced to join a conference. Yeah. And they have this nice five-game arrangement with the ACC, which then allows them to put all of their other teams into the ACC for competition. So they have a nice deal. I mean, it's basically football is the only sport. They have sport. a great deal because they yeah. generally are going to win those five games for the most part. Um, and then all their other sports benefit from it, which brings in revenue from medium revenue things. And they have this incredible TV deal um, because of their brand status. So being independent, but the way they've arranged it allows them to have the benefit of a conference without the limitations. Exactly. They just won the lacrosse championship out of the ACC. You know, um, the baseball yeah. conference is either the first or second best baseball, baseball conference. They're competitive and in they're basketball and you basketball, know, a lot yeah. of sports. That's I right. mean, I think they would struggle if if all of their sports across the board were independent. But I think with the way they've structured it, it's just football. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah, but like Rob said, it, it it makes sense, and they mm -hmm. can take advantage of the ACC for every other sport except for football, and still and still participate with five games. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're they're going to win most of those conference games. Uh, you know. You know, UConn used to be part of the Big East for all those years. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I feel like UConn and UMass will eventually tag on with some conference. And Notre Dame might be the only independent left. That's just my gut feeling on it. Uh, you see down below BYU, Liberty, New Mexico State all joined conferences in 2023. And then Army is joining the AAC in 2024. So essentially Notre Dame's the last independent left if UConn and UMass join a conference. It'll be interesting to watch. Uh, Pac-12, uh, Brad, you mentioned it. Two lonely teams left, Oregon State and Washington State. Um, both of them need to find a home. Uh, essentially, neither one is under a TV deal this year. I don't know how they're going to survive. Mm. <laughs> essentially, they're going to get a little bit of a purse every game they play, whichever game they're in. But essentially they're uh, kind of dead in the water right now unless they join a conference. So what are you guys' thoughts? Yeah, I don't I don't know what conference they fit in. I I can't I, when you when you look at the at the teams and and the synergies uh that they have there I, I don't know where I would put them. Mm -hmm. SEC's not bringing on anybody else. They're not a Big 10 Neither of those are Big Ten programs. No. Big 12, maybe? I don't think they're ACC. Big 12. You know what, Big 12? I, I hadn't thought of that. That might be a good place for them if Big 12 tries to beef up a little more. Um, I mean, they're, they're they're two good programs. There's nothing yeah, they're wrong not with good. programs. Yeah. Um, and, that, and, that, and by the way, if Big 12 did go there, that they would get the, you know, the upper northwest. They don't have coverage there right now. You know what'll probably happen is ACC will probably add them. <laughs> right, right. You know, Virginia will be flying to Washington State to play football. Well, we can, like Rob said, we can be the Athletic Coast Conference. You know, so <laughs> yeah. the Athlete Coast Conference so on both co both co both coasts covered. You know, right, That's right. right. That's right. What a mess this realignment stuff is, guys. Yeah, it kind of <laughs> reminds me of all the NIL stuff. It's just, it's not, it's not a finished piece of art yet it's going to be that's right sloppy and sometimes you got to step back from it to see what you're painting you know i wonder what year in the future we're going to feel like this stuff's all settled out you know what is it going to be 2027 2028 five Finally years feel settled five five years maybe yeah be so I, you know from a from an internal standpoint those two schools are going to struggle recruiting yeah no, there's no I mean, doubt. It, the only way they're going to get really, really good talent is if they have a big pool of money, and and obviously if they're not getting TV deals, they're not unless they've got big booster money coming in that they can throw some money and get some talent out of the portal. Um, that's going to be tough to recruit players. No question about it. So, yeah, uh, let is the big question, you know. Yeah. So, last note on conference realignment here. 
writings on the wall for many programs, North Carolina being the main one in the ACC that's having a lot of problems. They ran a $26 million deficit in 2023. So you tack 51 million on top of that and the financial pressure just continues to ratchet upwards, right? Um, and then uh, it was interesting to see that Tar Heels, Florida State, and Clemson, all three voted against Stanford, Cal, and SMU joining the ACC, but got outvoted 12 to 3 in that vote. So, um, you know, <laughs> it just seems like those three schools are gone to me. I don't know about you guys, but uh, if, if any schools do leave, it's going to be those three, I think, for financial and other reasons. Yeah, yeah I, th I think uh, I think you might be right there. I, I I think Florida State is they're ready to go. As a matter of fact, I'm not quite sure they haven't why they haven't put out to the boosters a big hey you know let's get some money and just buy our way out because they've got plenty of uh, plenty of alumni that can and, and that can afford to to ante up some money and get out. Um, same with North Carolina and Clemson. Uh, yeah. But I will say Florida State has less tradition in the ACC than Carolina and Clemson do. Right. So so there's more of an anchor for those two teams. Florida State, uh, it makes less sense for them to stay than the other two. Carolina is one of the original founding um, yeah. teams. Yeah. And Clemson uh, used to be the, the top – top dog forever you know interesting quote really here. In the acc for a while interesting interesting quote here from a unc official on june 3rd of this year just a couple weeks ago i think our obligation to the acc to be the best partner with our conference we can be i also think we have to look at what's in the best interest of the university today and going forward and that was bubba cunningham their athletic director so he's already kind of setting the stage for you know hey we want to be a good partner but you know, you guys need to make us whole here kind of thing. So, interesting. Anything you're hearing up in the triangle, Robbie, about Carolina? Not right now. There's just all kinds of lawsuits underway and mm -hmm. discussions about what, what should happen. I think there's just a lot of unknowns. That's right. Unfortunately, it's it's – out of our control, but I think we can, we can work through it and, 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 and guide the athletes hopefully and, and, uh, help them realize that, look, you're there to get educated. You get there to play a sport and, uh, first and foremost, just go have fun. Yeah, I would agree with that. Robbie. I think nobody wins if the NCAA gets damaged beyond repair. Um, Everyone knows that. Everyone's in the same boat on that one. Um, college athletics is in a very good place uh, with competition um, and uh, exposure on television. And so there's a lot of positives. Um, I do think this is a mess that will evolve into something more stable. And when that happens, I think – It'll be more obvious what's happening with rivalries and conference realignments, and um, and I think some some more changes will happen as a result of that. But I do think, um, generally speaking, the mess is a set of obstacles that they're going to clear over and get to um, a better place, and then everyone will figure out what NIL is supposed to look like, what pay to play is going to be ultimately like and um, what all the new rules are going to be governing these things from wherever it came from. So it'll be okay. But it's, it's not real pretty uh, making the sausage. <laughs> I agree with both you guys. They're going to figure it out. Um, sports will survive. I do think there's a 50-50 chance NCAA will go into bankruptcy and, and emerge as some new form, maybe even change their name or, or become separate leagues. You might have a football league, a basketball league. Um I also think Congress is going to have to step in or maybe a series of judges are going to have to deny some claims along the way or else the NCAA is going to sink just under the weight of the crushing lawsuits that are against them. So on the legal side, I don't know how that's going to come out. I really don't. Um, on the sports side, like you said, the sports have never been better. The athletes have never been better. The competition has never been better and more popular. 
sports betting has made it even more popular. The TV um, ratings are through the roof for football and basketball. Um, so I think they'll find a way through it. I think this is going to be a rough couple of years, and uh, we're just going to have to hold on tight. Now, my thought is that we're at four conferences, major conferences now. It'll be that way for a little while. There may be some continued consolidation. You might see some of the mid-majors come up and fill in some of the holes as teams leave. Um, but, uh, you know, my hope is that we find a way through this and that we get back to playing the games and not worrying about the courtrooms. So, Brad, I want to thank you so much for coming tonight. It was an awesome discussion and uh, loved your perspective, love all your feedback on uh, the state of the sport and, and where we're going to go from here. So really appreciate your time. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thanks for coming, Brad. All right, guys. Well, make sure you like this video. You subscribe to the channel. Really happy we had Brad on and uh, look forward to the next episode coming up. You guys have a great night. Yep. You too. Thanks. See you. Great job, Brad. Did you have fun? Good.